Hey guys, it's me, Brick Bros. I'm going to be talking through some editing that I did for a video I'm working on. The video is new stop motion. It's about Django Fett, and I'm going to be doing some editing on it, and this is just a video of me doing some editing. The video is about times four speed, so it's going to be going by pretty quick. I'm going to be doing some muzzle flashes, some masking, some laser bolts, and keyframe, and all that stuff. Now, I'm going to be using Final Cut Pro and Motion 5, both of which are Apple applications that you do have to buy, but I believe you can do keyframes in the new iMovie, so that's pretty cool. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and play the video. Let's start the editing here. So, first thing I did is I imported my photos to iPhoto, and there you can see Django Fett walking along like that. I then wanted to open up Final Cut Pro, and I imported the photos from iPhoto into Final Cut Pro. Now it takes a little bit for it to import and I wait otherwise it kinda glitches out for me but anyway it's at 35 percent 41 and done alright perfect I then select all the photos and I make them about 0.2 seconds long that's my generic go-to but sometimes if I need it to be faster I'll go to 0.1 and I, and I mess around with them on how fast they need to be, and I try and make the animations smoother. Like my walk cycle is normally 0.2, but any like motions that need to be a little faster than that, I make 0.1. I had a pause right there for when he lifts his gun up and shoots the dude, and then I also tried to make his fall as smooth as I could, and I was having some trouble with that, but I think the end result turned out pretty well. After that, I highlight all of the clips, and I drop it into a new project, and then I basically export that out as a movie, I finalize it, and there's the movie. I then drag the movie into Motion 5. Now, Motion 5 is where I do all of my special effects stuff, like green screen, keen, masking, all that all that jazz. I do that in Motion 5, and then I just drag it back into Final Cut Pro. All right, so I'm looking for a muzzle flash. I have a whole library of them. There we go. I found the one that looked pretty good. I used Luma Keyer to key out the black behind the muzzle flash, so it's just the muzzle flash. I mess around with it, try and make it pop a little bit more. Uh, that looked pretty good. The next thing that I wanted to do is I wanted to add a glow. Now the glow helped it stand out, uh, and I think it made it look a little more like a more realistic explosion. I then add some color correction color eyes, and I make the outside red and the inside white and make it look more Star Wars blaster effecty. I could have done blue, but I, I like the red better. I then add a blur to it and shrink it down so it fits better with the background. I then go to iPhoto, drag my one blaster bolt that I have that I made in Photoshop, and I add another color eyes to it. I make the outside red, inside white, and add a glow to it to make it, as I said, pop a little bit more. Um... I messed, I messed around with the mix of it, I shrunk it down, and then I put it at the barrel of his gun. Now, I'm just messing with the adjustments a lot on this, because I'm just I'm trying to make it look good, I'm trying to get the angles right, that looks like it could come from his gun. I had some trouble with it, but I, I think that looks good right there. Uh, to move the gun, I use a lot of keyframes. Now, keyframes, not to move the gun, sorry, move the laser, I use a lot of keyframes, and the keyframes basically tell it where to be from point A to point B. Uh, so, boom, just click the keyframe button and then I move it through where I want the bullet to go and then I place another keyframe like that. Alright, I watch it and that looks pretty good. Normally the bullet's in the air for about 8 to 10 frames and that's what I use if you do it any longer I think it's in the air too long. That's what I messed up on my Battlefront Star Wars video. I think the, the bullets were in the air too long. Alright, I'm looking for another muzzle flash for Django Fett. So I pull it in, I once again do a luma keyer and a colorize and a glow. So the colorize, I make the outside red, inside white, and then I add a glow to make it more flashy, bright. I then collapse it down to where his gun is. Notice how it's though like blocking Django Fett, and we don't want it to do that. We want it to look like it's coming from his gun, so we're going to use a mask. So I figure out where the gunshot is, and then I'm going to have to trace around Django Fett for that mask. So I am messing around with the mix of the Luma Keyer to make it look a little better, and then I just make it invisible so that I can see where I need to trace out. I then trace around Django Fett with my masking tool all the way around the gun. I was making sure I was on the right side, because if I wasn't, then I would have had to redo this. So I was making sure I was on the right side, and I keep tracing around. I'm sure that there's a more effective way of doing this, but 
I don't really know. And it hey, it worked for me at the time. So good enough, I'd say. I then go to the mask properties and I I go to the mask and I change the roundness and I change the feather. Uh, now the feather just kind of bleeds it into the explosion of the gun a little bit and then the roundness kind of rounds out the edges so it doesn't look like I chopped it. It makes it look less artificial. I then have to do a mask again for another frame. And I basically trace around him doing the same thing. Now this is just telling the explosion to not go there. Um, I once again mess with the roundness and the feather make it look a little bit less artificial and then I, I watch it it looks pretty good I then collapse down the mask so it's only there for a couple frames because I don't need it there that whole time that would clog up some rendering I once again drag in my blaster bolt and I colorize it I have the outside red and inside white and I add a glow just to you know have it stand out a little bit more make it look like it's actually glowing I then make it come from the barrel of his gun and I will once again add another keyframe. So I keyframe it from point A, and then I move it, and I think I have it go for a headshot, and I collapse it down for to have the illusion of distance, and then I add another keyframe. I mean, that looks pretty good right there. Now I collapse down the rest of the clip because I don't want the bullet just kind of hanging there after it's been shot. So the bullet's gonna go away after it's in the air for those frames. So I messed up with that glow and I had to go back and change it. Yep, there you go. The next thing I wanted to do is I wanted to have a little explosion, a little dust explosion on the guy when he gets hit with the bullet. I think I go back to the first one, but I look around for better options. I think I found a light bulb somewhere in here. Yep, there it was. <laughs> um, I then import that in, and I once again do a luma cure to get rid of that black background. And then I collapse it down to where he gets hit with the bullet. Uh, yep, just like that. And I collapse it to give it some distance. And then I believe I add a blur to it to help it blend in with the background. There's my Gaussian. Gaussian. I don't really know how to pronounce that. Anyway, I crank up the amount of the blur to 64, apparently. And I think that blends in with the background pretty well. I then delete the rest of the powder hit a little hit on the dude that I don't need because I don't want to clog up those render times as I said and I also collapse down the distance of my whole video so I don't have to deal with render times as well. I then watch it, it looks pretty good and I will export it as a video onto my desktop as walking shot I believe I called it. Yep. Alright, perfect save and there's the video. Now I think the shot, the last shot, Django Fett's shot was a little too slow so I end up going back into Motion 5 and I delete one of my keyframes and I make it so that the bullet is in the air for 8 to 10 frames opposed to last time where I had it to 10 to like 14 or 13 frames and that was too long. So I wanted the bullet to be a little bit faster so I messed around with the keyframes and I had to collapse the clip down a little bit and then I moved keyframes and I moved the clip of the powder hit up so that it would do it sooner and match with the bullet. I export it out once again, Django Fett walking shots, and replace the one on the desktop. I watch it. Hold on. There you go. Now I watch it, and I think that that looks a lot better. I go back to Final Cut Pro, which wasn't opening for some reason, so I had to like force quit it and stuff. But it eventually opens here in a second. There you go. As I go back into Final Cut Pro. <laughs> go back to my original project and import in the video. Now this is just where I'm putting everything else in, whether it be the stop motion or the other effects shots. This is just my final composition and where I add sound. So I just start adding sound, whether it's like bullets fly by or the, the weapon shooting sound effects and walking, all that. I think that the final shot looks pretty good with the sound and all that. Um, now this video is for a Django Fett thing that I'm doing. Yeah, I don't know when it will be out. It depends how much I do, uh, this, you know, motivation. I've done quite a bit in the past couple days. Uh, but hey, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section. And I will try and reply to them as soon as I can. Thanks. I will see you guys later.